To further Micron Foundation's philanthropy in response to the global pandemic, a cost-effective smart mask that can measure the health of a user is critical when supplies and measurement tools are scarce. This mask will eliminate the need of dedicated measurement tools that record body temperature, oxygen level, and breathing patterns, instead integrating these features into a mask. This mask can help determine who is of suboptimal health by measuring and recording this data to deter them from entering public spaces and alerting the wearer in an effort to reduce the spread of any viral disease. The main feature that sets this mask apart from the many that are already being worn is its ability to record medical data from the user. So, what is it actually going to measure? As of the current iteration, we are planning on having it measure blood oxygen content, skin temperature, heart rate, and have plans to measure breathing and or coughing patterns in the future. With this much data being recorded, it is important to us to not have the mask be intrusive in any way to the user and make the data acquisition as seamless as possible. Some other prominent features include having a replaceable air filter, pop-out electronics for cleaning and reusability purposes, a one-week battery life with an uptime of 12 hours per day, and the ability to export data via Bluetooth. More details on these features will be covered in later slides. Based on the criteria that I mentioned in the previous slide, we have selected the following sensor. For body temperature, we selected MLX90614. This sensor is an, an infrared thermometer for non-contact temperature measurement. This sensor is a small and low cost. It has medical accuracy of 0.1 degrees Celsius. And finally, it power saving mode. For broad pressure, we selected MKB0805. This sensor is a small and low cost as well. It also has low power consumption and high sensitivity. For blood oxygen, we selected MAX30102. This sensor is an integrated pulse oximetry and heart rate monitor module. It has a lower power consumption and operate on the single 1.8 volt power supply. It is also very small while it does not sacrifice the optical or electrical performance. The main method of data storage will be to the SD card, but we plan on also utilizing Bluetooth to more easily access the data via the user's phone and or send flags if the readings indicate abnormality. Using all three sensors the whole time the device is worn should work, but is unnecessary, as we don't expect random spikes in blood oxygen and temperature as the day goes on. We could save battery life by only recording these when the device is put on and every half hour or so. Healthcare providers should have the same access to the data as the user through the same local methods, and the flags will be determined on device so data will be confidential to only those giving specific physical access to the device. There were a handful of options for batteries to use, we decided that replaceable batteries would be easier to implement and remove for cleaning, as well as faster turnaround if the user would find the device drained when they need to wear it. Specifically, two CR2032 models were chosen for their specific electric specs and a minimum physical profile. Compared to another option, four quadruple A's, they're a fifth the weight, but have about half the battery life. And the flat shape should also be easier to hold onto the mask. We've estimated the current, uh, the current used while running code will be 29.2 milliamps. And the stated battery life of the battery is uh, 235 milliamp hours. Therefore, this should last approximately eight hours with full use. But hopefully, if we implement the intermittent data collection, it should last longer. While this current presentation is representative of the prototype, we have done a bit of work in the block diagram to allow us to work better towards a final design. The prototype electronics were picked and diagrammed with more modularity and leeway in mind. This will allow us to hopefully drop in an Atmel microcontroller without any major changes. This is done by reducing Arduino-specific dependencies like voltage conversions and allowing a separate subsystem to handle that. Aside from that, the ma other major difference would be the fact that the prototype will be sporting an OLED display for debugging. This will be removed in the final design. So here's a basic overview of our current CAD model. 
Uh, right now it's just a surface body, but it should give you an idea of the general shape that we're going for for this mask. As far as next steps, we need to add all the features to house the electrical components. We're just waiting for the components to come in so we can get precise dimensions of each component. We'll also need to run a design for manufacturer analysis towards the end to make sure that this design is optimized for injection molding. After looking over all previous information as mentioned in the presentation and as well as our website, we have tabulated a final bill of materials needed to set the physical aspect of our project in motion. As shown here on the first half of our bill of materials, all of the parts are found listed on Amazon, which makes it much easier for us to order and have relatively low shipping time. Continuing on to the second page, we also see that everything here can be found on Amazon. We have opted to choose for quadruple A batteries here, but depending on final design, these might be swapped out. We would also like to point out that based on our research, the sensors selected are our top choices, but depending on how things go with physical testing, these components are subject to change as well. With all of that being said, our estimated project cost, excluding shipping, is $161.17. The links to all of these items can be found on our Google site under the Bill of Materials section.